Well, new samples obtained from the far side of the moon shows it had a much more dynamic history than previously thought. Chinese researchers say the soil samples contain fragments of basalt, a volcanic rock, dating back as far as 4.2 uh, billion years ago. The findings point to a prolonged period of volcanic activity on the far side of the moon of at least 1.4 billion years. Joining me now is Dan Riskin, our CTV science and technology expert, and I think we're both going to nerd out a little on this. This is like two moons, isn't it? And good morning. How are you, sir? I'm, I'm well. I, it's nice to see you. Yes, let's nerd out. I mean, it is, it's like a different place, right? I mean, the moon has two sides. One side's always facing the Earth, and that is the side that Apollo landed on. Russia sent some robotic landers there over the years, and every landing up until very recently has been on the side that we can see. And sometimes when you can only see one side of something, you sort of tell yourself that the other side's probably the same, right? I mean, that seems like mm -hmm, a safe assumption. Now China has finally sent a, uh, a robotic mission to the other side called Chang'e 6. It landed where we can't see it on the back. Uh, it took a sample, brought it back, and now we're seeing what it found in those samples. And it's just as you say, it's like a different place. It's like a different moon. It, it's totally different from the side that faces us. Now, what are some of the key things that stand out on this? Well, one of the things that stands out is that there appears to have been a magma or, or, or liquid volcanic rock at the surface 2.8 billion years ago. And that is much more recent than anything we've seen uh, in the old samples from Apollo. And, uh, you know, as we learn more about different places, there is another place where there are some samples that are 2 billion years old, but these are 2.8 billion years old. And then you have the really old ones. And so what it does is it just gives a, a lot more complexity to the story. It really says, you know, we know that the moon was a molten thing for some time. But, you know, a lot of what we've assumed about the moon and what we've sort of inferred has been based on these small number of samples that Apollo took. And so, uh, and then those Apollo, you know, those Apollo samples feel like they're old history, but they're actively still studied. I mean, the NASA gets 60 research requests for new studies for those samples from Apollo every single year. And they were collected, you know, as late as 1972 and most of them earlier than that. So the fact that those samples are still being investigated so closely and more than 2,500 scientific papers have come from those really speaks to the value of this new data sample uh, samples from the far side of the moon from a place that we haven't studied at all. Um, and right now they're locked up in China. And because China and the rest of the world don't get along very well, there's some <laughs> there's a lot of political strings to pull in order for people in Canada or the United States to be able to look at those samples. But when the Chinese scientists publish reports about what they see in them, uh, we're, you know, we're goggling over them. We're, we're very excited to find out everything we can. Now, with the volcanic activity occurring relatively recently, uh, does that mean there's a possibility that there could have been life on the moon on that side? There, there isn't really much discussion about the possibility of life on the moon, mostly because of the lack of an atmosphere and the lack of sort of bodies of water. And so, yes, the, the, we had molten Earth and now we have life and, and molten moon would be similar. The, the real big question with the moon, with our moon, is was it once a, a big, huge thing that smashed into the Earth and then... Uh, started floating around as a, a satellite around the Earth and then cooled down, and it's built of a lot of the same pieces as the Earth? Or is it a asteroid that was sort of trapped by the Earth's gravity and, and came into uh, orbit around it? Like, were we once touching or have we never touched before? That's one of the basic questions that's still being debated. But in terms of life on moons, you know, our moon... I love our moon. I have nothing <laughs> against our moon, but it's a little bit one of the more boring moons in the in the solar system because there are a lot of moons that probably do have exactly what you need for life. And if we could just get a good look, I think people would be uh, would not be very surprised if we found something growing there of some kind, uh, whether it's similar to what we have on Earth or not. Uh, and so that's where NASA is really uh, focusing its efforts in the in the future is to go to a lot of these places and, and have a have a careful look and see if we can find any sense of whether there is life on those other moons. All right. I would love to talk more about this, but we're out of time, Dan. Thank you as always, sir. As always. Okay. Take care. Thanks a All lot. Right. Dan Riskin is our CTV science and technology expert.